Welcome to Focus Today. I'm your host, Perry Atkinson, and always a delight and an honor and a privilege to have in the studio with us, Patrick Doyle. He heads up Veritas Counseling and uh, one of most the most uh, popular people that we have on the air. So don't let it go to your head. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I'll make sure that it won't. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's amazing. It really is amazing. We have these discussions and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> several thousand hits on YouTube and yep. things, it just goes all over the place. I got an email from Fiji last week. Fiji? Yes. Really? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Somebody saw this stuff on YouTube and What's sent an it? email. All right, so. Um, they want to do phone counseling from Fiji. Well, I figured I'd see if they could fly me in. Well, there you go. Uh, so what I'm, the other point here is that these programs do get up on YouTube a little bit later on, uh, and then you can go to the Dove website at the Dove.us and share this with uh, family members and friends. Just send them the uh, YouTube address. Mm -hmm. Well, today we want to talk about something pretty interesting. What gives you value? Yeah. And uh, if we don't get this one right. Boy, everything kind of gets mixed up because I think you're looking for value in all the wrong places. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, so why did you select this? Why Is this something you've been dealing with? Well, actually, it's a funny thing. Uh, you know, I, I uh, have the privilege. I get together with a group of guys once a week. Same group of guys. Uh, we get together every week. And last night, you know, I was, I'd been playing with some things that I wanted to use as topics. And every occasionally I'll just <coughs> ask them what they think. And so... One of the guys particularly said, you know, this is something that he struggles with, and he's a younger guy. He's in his mid-20s. So he said, um, you know, what about, you know, I get strung out on my work. He says, I'm, I'm and he's a very successful kid. He's, you know, made, made a lot of uh, great accomplishments in a very early life. And he says, but I find myself, you know, I get to the pinnacle of all that success, or I, or, you know, that, that stuff, I, I accomplish something, but then you're up there and you're like, well, this doesn't really provide the punch or the, or the, the life that I thought it would. Mm. And, and then, you know, then there's all the stuff about, is it in your relationship with your wife or is it in your relationship with your husband or is it in raising your kids or is it in, you know, uh, whether people like you or not, or is it, there's all these things that are very attractive to us in terms of temporary, but do they provide a they do they try to provide a value that leads to peace? Mm. And that's the thing that I wanted to really focus on today because and, and the truth is, Perry, every single one of us struggles with this. Every single one of us struggles with with hooking into something to get value out of it because it works for the moment. And you know, my 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 belief is that ultimately the the only place where that value comes from is, is a spiritual place. It's not anything external. And so what I see so much of is people are what I call externalizing their value. So it's all out here. They have to have the right job. They have to have the right relationship there. They have to be the right person. They have to say the right things. The right people have to like them. On and on it goes. And that's, that treadmill is vicious. Um, <clears throat> it's amazing to me. Um, it first shows up in buyer's remorse. <laughs> Right? Well, it's you, one of the places it shows well, up. Well, you go out and you, 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 yeah. uh, you, you want whatever this is. You get the car. The, the car or the, the person. Right, right. Uh, or the you, purse or whatever. Whatever it is. And you buy it and you kind of go, oh. <laughs> you know, what did I do that for? You know? It's not as great as so I thought. So the value wasn't there. Yeah. And so, but, but it did provide, you know, meaningful distraction long enough. Yeah. So it distracted me from Certainly what was fueled impulse. Yeah, it, it distracted what was going on inside of me or what was disturbing me sufficiently long enough that I was it, it was worth it. And we I see people doing this, I do it. I think everybody does it on in various ways. Um, and you know, over my life I've seen the things change. Uh, you know, and as I hope as I mature, you know, my dependence on external things will decrease. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is is that if you're if you're externally dependent, if you're expecting things on the outside of you to bring you satisfaction and value, you're going to have a hard time with relationships. Okay, uh, let me say, this is going to get good. Uh, <laughs> let me say to our uh, viewers Let's and hope. listeners, if you want to join us, the phone number is 776-5770. That's the number uh, that comes into the studio. All right, that's area code 541-776-5770. 
And if you want to join the conversation, you're welcome to do that. And if you want to remain anonymous, we'll certainly respect that request as well. So uh, take advantage of Patrick being here. Where do you get your value? Now, I will back up and say that <clears throat> a lot of people, because they can't figure out where value comes from, mm -hmm. probably fuels their depression and their addictions. Yes, it does. And, and well, you know, in, in my life, addiction was one of the ways I tried to get the value. Explain that one. <laughs> <laughs> so if I feel pretty horrible on a regular basis internally, I don't like who I am, I don't like how I feel, I don't like the way my life is, I don't like a lot of things about my, my reality, and I start using substance, and I feel better. And that's great. It's like finally something that helps me have a little peace, a little relief. So I substitute. Um, so when I, when I use substance, what I'm doing is I'm lowering the difficulty artificially, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm checking out. I'm numbing out. Okay, so that happens. And then I, 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 think, that I'm, I think I'm making a way towards peace. But really, all I'm doing is just sufficiently distracting myself so I don't feel it. Nothing actually changes. I just numb it down for a little while. And that process happens in all kinds of scenarios. I see it in people doing it with relationships. They're medicating their internal pain with relationships. And it's, you know, I did this for a while and when I was a young man. And I, the greatest drug I ever did was infatuation. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, when you're infatuated, the whole world is beautiful. You know, everything is glorious. That person loves you, you love them, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going wrong, right? But that didn't last. No relationship stays in the infatuation stage forever. So I distract myself sufficiently. The problem is, with distraction, is nothing really changes internally. And se except for, I probably stack up a few more things that are gonna make me uncomfortable. Yeah. And so going through those distractions really ends me in a worse place. All right. Where does self-esteem, self-worth come into this? Because I am surprised, and you, you are the professional counselor, but what little I've done through the years, what a lot of I've done through the years, <laughs> <laughs> by default, <laughs> I am surprised of how many <coughs> believers don't find their value in their relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. It's kind of epidemic, and I think there's probably a... It's probably a whole show on that. Um, and I, what I see, Perry, is that it's, um, it's more of a religion that they're clinging to rather than a person. They're, they're caught up that, Well, you know, I, uh, I said earlier today, um, I picked up uh, Jim Simbola's new book called The Storm. I just started uh -huh. reading it last night. Uh -huh. Chapter one is just incredible. But he made the point in there, he said, some surveys will say that 70-something percent of America will claim to be Christian. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, then why are we in a mess? <laughs> right. Okay. Right. When the true number is more like 9% yeah. are true uh, Christians that right. have a relationship with Christ right. that find everything there and right. emulate their life from there. Right. That's a huge difference. The is. question is, then is the light going out in America from the Christian church? Mm -hmm. So if the Christians aren't seeing value with their relationship with Christ, but yet they're attending church every Sunday, right. what's going on? Well, <clears throat> that's exactly what I'm talking about. To me, that's one of those things that we do that's external. If I go to church and I pay my tithe and I have good standing with the church and you know people like me, then I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, I get value from that. <clears throat> but there's no... There's no way any of that is, all that, I've seen, what I've seen that do is make people feel more pressure. Because the truth be told, all of us are sinners. <laughs> yeah. And trying to be good doesn't work out too good. <laughs> yeah. Because <clears throat> I'm a sinner. What I need is salvation. What I need is somebody to help me. I don't need more pressure. And this is the difference between a, uh, what I would call a God-centered uh, gospel and a man-centered gospel, okay? There's, there, over the last 50 years, there's been a tragic shift from my perspective. <clears throat> to, from God being what we need to, the, what you need to do is make a decision. It's the best decision of your life <clears throat> so you can go to heaven. Well, I got to tell you that the scripture doesn't make that the point of our lives. The mm -hmm. point of our lives is, is to glorify God. 
It's not to go to heaven. It's not to have a better life. But so much of the preaching has been, if you make a decision for Jesus, he'll make your life better. And we all know that's not exactly how it works. <clears throat> so, subsequently, people get involved in a Christian reality based on them getting what they want. Well, that's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. So, there, if, if, it's, if it's based on me getting what I want, obviously there's not going to be much spiritual growth or maturity there. So, uh, well, we're going to get into this. I'm going to have to take a break. Let me just say, you're welcome to join us. The phone number is 541-776-5770. Uh, before I take a break, I, I want to go back to the other question. Okay. Why is it then so many Christians don't find their value in the relationship with Christ? Um, I'll, I, I, I would love to talk about okay. that. Okay. All right. We'll take a quick break. You're welcome to join us. Give us a call. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paulina, and I work at the Dove TV. Did you know that when you support the Deaf TV, you have a profound impact, not only in our community, but around the world? It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. Okay, we're back uh, with uh, Patrick Doyle, and we're talking about a very interesting topic. Where do you get your value? Now, it's you, you on the surface, you might think, well, this is kind of a light topic. Really? <laughs> really? Do you feel valued by God? Yeah. That would be a big question. Right. Because something's falling through the cracks here that is becoming alarming to me. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> The, the world is getting crazy. Yeah. You know, let's, let's just face yeah. it. It's just nuts. And, yeah. and, and we're caught up in it, too. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so, um, but what seems to be going away here is um, the miraculous. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, seeing a miracle or. <clears throat> right. Uh, when's the last time you have literally felt God's presence? Mm -hmm. You right. know, where it just right. kind of stops you dead in your yeah. track and you know it's God. You know yep. th mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit is hovering over you or is mm -hmm. stirring in right. you. Right. When's the last time you felt that? Mm -hmm. Right. And if, and, if, and if you can't remember that, then you're getting your value from every place else right but there. You right. Know? And so yeah. since we're not going back to that spot, mm -hmm. right. we're settling for less value on other things. And yes. it's a combination yeah, God loves me, but yes. man, I got to have this big job. Yes. It's a combination. Yes. And what's fallen through the crack is the one thing that the church can give the world, and that is the spirit realm, and we don't seem to be delivering the goods. Right. Well, you know, what I see over and over again, Perry, is Christians who are living their lives to get the love of God mm. instead of Christians who are living their lives from the fact that they have the love of God. I mean, God's love has been bestowed upon us. It's not something we strive for. It's something we operate out of. So if we don't have any peace, because we don't have any depth of knowledge of the fact that we're accepted, we're loved, and God knows everything. He knows every thought I've had, every deed I've done. He knows it all, and He loves me. And I know that He does. I know. It doesn't matter what you say or they say or anybody else says. I know that. And that's what I operate from. I don't operate from knowledge. Knowledge can't get me there. So the motivator is the love, being loved in a way that you can't even articulate. And so what I, what I see over and over again is people doing all these things to get that love. That's what I mean by external. They're, it's out here. If I do this, then it'll happen. If I do that, then it'll happen. And <clears throat> last I checked, God's the one in charge of revelation. Yeah. I, I can't make it happen. I've begged for it, but it's his timing. He mm -hmm. does it in his way, his, his timing. And I just had a conversation with a, with a couple yesterday, and the man brought in a piece of paper that he'd written where God had spoken to him very profoundly and, you know, over the course of a couple of days. And it was, it was transformational, Perry. And see, that's what I'm getting at, is when you are valued at that level, it changes you. And <clears throat> I say this a lot. You cannot be spiritually mature and remain emotionally immature. Mm. 
but you see it all the time. All of this maturity on the outside, but then the behavior, the life, the way they treat other people isn't maturing. In fact, it might be getting worse. You know, you and I have seen lots of this mm -hmm. over the course of time uh, with people we know. Um, so the facade of spiritual life is a problem. And I, I, really, I really wish that we could drop some of those facades and, and, and the church become a place that's safe instead of a place where I have to perform. Just to be able to go there and say, look, I am undone. I don't know what to do. I need help. Instead of, I got it together and I'm, praise the Lord and amen. And, you know. So why is it valuable to have value? <clears throat> because without it, you have no, you, without it, there's no compass. You, you, everything is, you're, you're shooting at all kinds of different targets all the time. You know, the, the value that I have received from God, and look, the reason why God loves me is, I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain it, but yeah. what I do know is that he does. I have, I, have, I have irrefutable proof in my soul that he loves me. And this is the thing that I long for for my brothers and sisters is to have that irrefutable proof. Because listen, it's not an intellectual thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a much deeper thing. It's, it's a foundational element of what gets me through everything that comes my way. Uh, and so that, pr that produces some sturdiness, right? Not power, not, uh, you know... It, uh, untouchableness, it, what it produces is a sturdiness. And this is what you see in the writings of Paul. His, his sturdiness in being, I mean, that guy was beaten five times with a cat of nine tails, 39 lashes. So 39 times five. Jesus had it once. Mm -hmm. Paul had it five times. I can't imagine what that guy's back looked like. Mm -hmm. It must have been a mess. Uh, why? Why did that happen to him? It happened to him because he wouldn't shut up about Jesus. <laughs> it was, and, and he didn't, he said, I rejoice in my suffering for Christ. What? Mm -hmm. there, you, you, there's no human way you could say that. <laughs> that is a whole nother spiritual plane. All right, so the person who's listening to today uh, is in their storm. Yes. And they're wondering, mm -hmm. what happened to my value? Yeah. Um, Good. if God loved me, then why, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, those questions, quite frankly, are not going to get answered until we get to heaven. I, mm -hmm. Right. I mean, some of this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if we're doing people a disservice by saying coming to God and everything will straighten out. We are. But because we're putting the emphasis on a good feeling. Yes. And, their, and their, instead of a relationship. Yeah, you yes, know. we're putting the emphasis on their outcome. And if you read the Bible, <laughs> yeah. outcomes don't, aren't, aren't controlled by people. Right. Um, and so in the difficulty of my life, and I got it, you got it, we all got it, what, what brings me comfort is, is, is the outcome that I want, is that what brings me comfort? Because if that's what's going to bring me comfort, I'm going to be pretty disturbed because I've had a lot of things go away other than I wanted. Yeah. I mean, every single day things go away other than I want. So do you think you were devalued in God when that happened? I have, and that's one of the things that we need to talk about because, because things don't go my way doesn't mean that God doesn't love me. And I hear that all the time, that, that you know, if God loved me, then these things wouldn't happen. If God loved me, I wouldn't have been abused by my dad. Mm -hmm. Well, God loves me, and I was abused by my dad. <laughs> my dad was a broken, sinful soul, and I was abused by him. That, that doesn't mean God doesn't love me. I mean, look around. The world is a very evil place, and the only hope I think we have is for God's redemption of the evil, the evil that I've done, the evil that others have done to me, if without God's intervention, it's, it, you know, let's all go to Vegas mm -hmm. and just go out in a big ball of fire. But because of God's redemptive love, there's all kinds of hope and there's all kinds of power. But here's the deal. I think you got to slow down. You got to slow down quite a bit to hear it. Most of us in our minds, just Chatter, 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 chatter. Things are going really fast. This they got to do. What about that? And how coming? And because they and I got to go there. And because and what about? And then I got to watch. And then I'm on my TV and I got my phone and I'm on the computer. So there's so much chatter in our heads. We we can't hear anything. I really think you got to stop. 
slow down, turn everything off, and listen. This is one of the great things we're missing, I think, in spiritual life today is, is the ability to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Most people are very uncomfortable with quiet. Well, we're impatient. Yeah, well, <laughs> and the other thing is when I'm quiet, guess what? Things come up I don't want to think about. Mm -hmm. I stay busy to keep them back there so they're not on my conscience level, my conscious level. So one of the things that happens is we get quiet and then all this stuff that's uncomfortable comes up and then we start distracting ourselves and we're like, well, I can't do that. And I would suggest sit through it, lean into it, let the uncomfortableness come up and, and write it down. I don't care what it is. I don't care how much it is. Just, just document it. Your job is not to figure it out not to change it. You just want to get all that content and put it on paper. Because here's what happens, Perry. In my head, I have no control over it. It morphs and turns and gathers and, you know, turns yeah. into a giant ball. So if I write it down, I can, I can close that up and put it away. And then tomorrow I can pull that up and look at it and it's the same. It didn't change. So I can start to get some, some traction on that and maybe work my way through some of that stuff. Okay, but if I don't ever stop long enough to put that on paper, to like think about it, work through it, talk to someone else about it so that I can get some perspective, then that stuff just keeps driving in me and, stays, and things start just collecting. And next thing you know, I've got this big ball of stuff chasing me. Well, there's no peace in that and there's mm -hmm. never going to be. It, you, there's no way around it. You've got to go through it. And this is what I see all the time is that people don't have any will. They don't, they have too much fear. They're, you know, they don't have time. There's always a reason I don't, I can't do that. And when you, one of the things about spiritual life is that you have, it's about having, taking time to be quiet mm -hmm. instead of do, 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 do. And this is another problem I think in the church is that we're, we're, we're so busy doing stuff. We're not really taking care of our own internal world so that we're like actually able to be present for somebody else. All right, if you want to uh, get involved in this, you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to join us. The number to the studio is uh, area code 541-776-5770. And, and uh, you're welcome to join us. If you want to remain anonymous, we'll certainly respect that. You know, a part of this is a asking the question and answering the question. Why, why should we feel why should we seek value? Why should we feel value? Mm. I mean, we're subconsciously going after it. Yeah. Well, how do we put it in perspective? In other words, why is value important? Why is value valuable to me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Why does it have that? So uh, anyway, if you want to join us, give us a call again, 541-776-5770. We'll be right back with Patrick Doyle. Hi, I'm Paula and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back. Hi, how you doing? And um, <laughs> Patrick Doyle's here. We're talking about value, and, and um, you know, let me just—you know—maybe you're driving or you're watching. Uh, ask the question: Do you feel valued? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I—it's I, amazing. Uh, um, social media, Facebook, yeah. yeah, and what people are doing to either show that they have value mm -hmm. or seeking approval, <clears throat> right? Uh, just yeah. read some of the comments, yeah, yeah. some of the postings. You look at that and you kind of go, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, if there were 5,000 Patrick Doyles, we'd fill all their offices up. <laughs> 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 we'd fill the camp. We'd just max it out. You know, I mean, you'd be busy sunrise to sunset, <laughs> you know. So why is it important <clears throat> that we know that we feel valued? What, what is it in our human psychic that we have to feel like we're worth something? Well, let's, let's, ask it in, let's ask it in a negative. What's the problem if you don't have value? Well, you have a martyr spirit. Well, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point of living? 
What's the point of doing anything? Who cares? And, and the lack of value is what I see as being the underside of, of most, if not all, the self-destructive behavior I see as a counselor. If I don't care, I don't care. So I don't care who I have a relationship with. I don't care how that relationship goes. I don't care how somebody treats me. I don't care how I treat other people. So that, that sense of value as a soul is really important to bring some, some structure, some meaning to your life. Um, and I see people all the time struggling in life to get value um, so that they can feel better. Mm -hmm. it, but from God's perspective, it's already there. He already values you. Um, I, had a, I had a cousin that was born profoundly retarded. Her mother uh, during pregnancy had a, uh, got thrown from a horse. And uh, so Christy was her name, and she was born where she couldn't see, she couldn't hear, she couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, she couldn't do anything. She was basically like a giant infant, and she like sat in her chair kind of a little like this, and every once in a while she'd kind of go, Gah! and that was like the extent of Christy's life. And so I often ask people, does Christy, she's, di she's died now, but does Christy have value? Of course. Why? She doesn't do anything. She just takes. Somebody has to feed her. Somebody has to change her. Somebody has to pick her up. Somebody has to move her. Well, I think she brings perspective to those who don't have what she doesn't have. Yeah. So often I say this to, to folks in my office, and they're like, well, of course Christy has value. And then I ask the question, how about you? Mm -hmm. Do you have value because you exist? Mm -hmm. Of course. The fact that God made you means you're valuable. And think about how our culture would change if we started to value people that way. Wow. And uh, so so to, to prove this point, I just read an article this last couple weeks. Sweden has almost nearly eliminated prostitution from their country. And, the, and how they did that was by one law change. And the law change was this. It went from prostitution, from being illegal to sell sex, it became illegal to buy sex. And what they said was that if you are buying sex from someone, regardless of the gender, you are abusing that person. Wow. Now that's true. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right? So. Wow. What they did was they put the value where it belonged. And then the government spent a bunch of money to educate the police officers about this transition and, to, and, to, and a whole bunch of money to help people that were in prostitution get out because they valued the person instead of devaluing the person because they're a prostitute. And it's very similar to what Jesus did with the woman who... You know, Mary, who he cast five, four or five demons out of, and she was a prostitute when he met her. Uh, he loved her. He didn't condemn her. And so if we, if we were loving, uh, I think that we would have a much larger impact. And we were, you know, but I don't think you can love like that until you, until you have been loved like that. And it's the scripture that says those who love who, those who have been forgiven much, love much. Those who have been forgiven little, love little. And it, for years I was very confused by that scripture because I thought, well, so are some people not forgiven much? <laughs> mm. And the truth be told, I believe what that scripture is saying isn't that some people aren't forgiven much. What, what it's saying is some people realize how much they're forgiven and other people don't realize how much they're forgiven. But everybody's forgiven much. Wow. Um, what do you say to the person who is trying to get their value out of being a churchgoer. In other words, they're faithful, they mm -hmm. serve, mm -hmm. they're there for everything, <laughs> uh, and they're looking for their value in their church connection. Mm -hmm. I say that's never gonna work. I did it. I was, you know, I nearly lived there at the church. I did, I was in ministry, blah, 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 blah. I did all that stuff, and it didn't, it didn't end in me having more peace. What it did was into me having more strife because listen, you know, David said this in Psalm 51. It's, it, it, you know, 
being religious, acting pious, that's not what you're after. What are you after? You're after a broken heart, a broken spirit, which is actually appropriate when you recognize who God is and who you are. <laughs> and so then you start to have humility. And listen, humility is very attractive. People who, every time I'm around somebody who's all together, I just feel bad. Because <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, here, here, were people, here were people hanging out with Jesus that were outside of social norms. They were ostracized. They were unacceptable, right? They're hanging out with him. And here's God in the flesh, okay? We're talking about perfection in the form of humanity. And they're hanging out with God, and they don't feel judged. Ooh. So if somebody's hanging out with me, and they feel judged, there's a problem. That's not right. And so all that comparison and being good and doing good, look, I love one of the things that Billy Graham said. He said, look, <laughs> it's all level ground at the cross. Mm -hmm. There's no platform. There's no platform. There's no better. There's nobody who's taller, shorter, better, gooder, and all that stuff. Mm, doesn't exist. We're all sinners who have been saved by God's mercy. Oh, okay. So when I feel the love of that, then how I treat others starts to change. So what happens is operating from a place of value starts to change my relationships. And this is one of the things that I see all the time. One of the things I deal with every day are broken relationships. Mm. And the reason they're broken is because people are, you know, trying to get something from another human being that they don't have. God said to men, in Ephesians 5, and I think this has been badly played by the church, but he, he said, men are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And I've heard a lot of sermons on that. And every time I hear one, I just feel bad because I don't really love my wife that like that. I don't have any natural desire to love anybody like that. Mm -hmm. My natural desire is to get what I want, when mm -hmm. I want, how I want, and don't bother me. Mm -hmm. That's my natural bent. So if I am not loved by God in such a way where I receive love, I'm never going to be able to love my wife appropriately. It, my, my ability to love my wife comes from God. It doesn't come from me having a date night and pulling myself up by my bootstraps and all that stuff. It comes from me being a pass-through vehicle for my wife. And I think that's a, that's, a, that's a microcosm of how we're supposed to live as Christians. We are loved by God and then we love others. But if we don't feel loved, if we don't know we're loved, we're going to do something else. Mary Martha. Yes. Um, one found their value by being at his feet. Yeah. The other one was trying to find their value by do, 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 do. Yes. Yeah, we know what he said about that. He said, don't bother her. She's doing the right thing by sitting here. Right? And does it, do people need to take care of stuff? Do we, you know, can everybody just sit around? No, of course we got to do stuff, but it's why. Do I do it to get my value or I do it because I want to do it as a result of being loved? Mm -hmm. I'm giving because of the love I've received, or am I scratching to get the love? And see, this is the huge difference. And what you talked about earlier, I think this is the, the difference between the 90% the, the and the 10%. The 90% are scratching, and the 10% are responding. The scripture says we love God because if we don't, he'll kick us into hell. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> That's not what it says. <laughs> it says we love God because he first loved us. So that makes it a responsive thing, not something I got to go try to conquer. He first loved me. He, he initiated the relationship, not me. I was resistant, and to this day I am. Mm. People ask me, <clears throat> what's your contribution to your relationship with God? Resistance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, how's that working for you? <laughs> yeah. no, it, was, it just reveals how merciful God is because I'm, I'm not very compliant. You know, I have, I have a lot of, you know, sin in me. And I think that's, that's like in my, the men I get to the privilege of meeting with once a week. That's part of why I do that. It's because I need other guys to be in, around me to help me stay clear because internally I, I can go sideways in a nanosecond mm -hmm. and so this kind of deeper level um, connection with other people is also one of the ways that I think the church is missing seeing the face of God I love that line in the um, in uh, Les Mis 
uh, to love another person is to see the face of God. I really believe that's true. But if we don't have relationships on some, a level deeper than just the surface, then no one's going to know what's going on with me. And the scripture says we're to um, bear one another's burdens. Well, I got to know what they are mm -hmm. to bear them, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're being selective. Uh, I think that to bear each other's burdens, we have to have enough of a relationship to know what the burden is, mm -hmm. right? And so confess our sins one to another. Well, that's going to be a little bit revealing. And so a lot of this surface level relationship, I think, is the problem because we're not able to get to the stuff that's really holding us back and developing that kind of love. And I think that intimate fellowship between Christians is one of the ways, one of the main ways that that love is, of God is revealed to us in a very practical, tangible way. Wow. All right, let me take a quick break. We'll come back again if you'd like to join us. The phone number is 541-776-5770. We're talking about value. Where do you get your value? And, um, if you have any questions or comments, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and L.A., Medford might be considered a small market, but at the Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back. We're talking about uh, where do you get your value? Wow, what a profound question, and I'm not even sure if we're answering it. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying real hard. Um, I, the obvious answer to that is, you know, you, you, you get it in your relationship with Christ. But, yeah. Um, that can almost seem trite if you don't yes. push in and yes and massage yes. that. Yes. Let me take a let me take a couple of um, calls here. Cool. Let's see if I can get this to work. Hi, uh, you had a comment about the Mary and Martha comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, and I had. Um I've noticed this in the church, and it, and it, it, it kind of it hurts sometimes, but at the same time, it's, um, I feel like I have a merry heart. I love, I love to sit at his feet. I love opening up the Word and being with him, you know. And um, I, the, the part about Mary and Martha, sometimes I feel like we, women in the church get pitted up against one another, yeah. and it's unfair, and I just want to let them know God loves you. Yeah. He loves you, Martha. You know, yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. Because he does. Yeah. Those are his friends. Yes. You know, he's friends mm -hmm. of both of them. Right. And they both have value and exactly. worth. Exactly. And um, one just has a certain personality or whatever. Yeah. You know, it makes her tick. But, but he loves her. It's a, if you pulled out a daisy, he'd be like, I love you. I love you. Right. I love you. I love you. <laughs> and um, But also, the, the, myth, the thing about Mary, sometimes that we get locked in also that part where we sit at his feet. And, well, Jesus came by for a while with his disciples. He, he came to visit for a while, not not just stay there all the time, but to visit for a while, stay at the house, open up the Word. You know, I mean, when I what the Bible didn't, wasn't written, but but to share. And so she took off her apron string, put down her broom, sat and listened. She mm -hmm. wanted to be her Lord and Savior and listen mm -hmm. and draw near. Mm -hmm. And and then that was for a time. But then when they left, she picked up her apron strings, picked up her broom again, and got back to work. She had work to do, too. Yeah. Sometimes people think that Mary's not doing work, <laughs> and, and we do. Yes. We have work to do, too. So sure. It's important not only to hear and listen, but we also have to apply that ourselves. Yeah. I like, I, so I like what you're saying that, you know, they're both loved. That's absolutely true. And I, I also think it's true that sometimes, you know, we devalue people who are some of the workers, um, but that's, that's not the right way to handle it. I appreciate that insight. Yeah, and, and it's just that, because I, I work at the, like, um, a Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Some of these women are, you, I cannot tell you they are, they are just like the, the Lord's Army. I mean, they are just, you know, busy, busy. And I know they probably don't take as much time maybe for some certain things. I can't tell them how much, I, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, yeah. it, right. somebody has to do those things. And, and it's just part of, and, and at the same time, 
yet somebody listens because it, because it's the part where I've been forgiven much. Because I've been forgiven much, I love much. Yes. That's the only reason why, because of his great love, his mercy, his it's who he is. That's what it comes from. And it's important for us to let them know that Christ, who he is, right. not not get stuck on the personality and our little problems or, our, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank but you. To draw near to him. All right, thank you. Good call. All right, let's see. Uh, we had another caller. You wanted to comment about finding value in marriage? Um, well, yeah. I wanted to talk to um, Patrick about the fact that um, my husband has struggled all his life with value mm. due to the fact that he was raised in an abusive um, family. Mm. And um, he is a Christian, but he doesn't have that gut relationship of how valuable he is as right. um, Christ's child. Mm. So, um, and it says in a marriage, you know, the husband is supposed to love the wife as Christ loves the church. Right. So the value of um, himself is um, the waivers, and then that means our, my value waivers, and then our marriage suffers. Right. What do you think keeps him from uh, accepting the value that he has, that God has for him? Uh, the struggle he has. What do you think keeps him from accepting God's value um, of him? Well, I don't know. Um, I, do, I don't know. I think that um, his childhood was, was rough. Yeah. Um, and I think he's confused about what value is. Um, what value is to him is really um, things, other things. Um, ever, he doesn't. He doesn't really have any deep relationships. To know that that is value. Right. Deep relationships are value because his family is very um, abusive, oh. superficial people. Okay. So has he ever dealt with any of that? No. Hey, let me just tell you something real quick. Um, with every with every abuse, the person that's being abused is sent a lie, a message that's a lie that says mm -hmm. they're worthless. They're, they're worth being abused. They're not worth being protected. And, when, exactly. that, and when, when that happens to you at a young age, it gets cemented pretty deep into your soul. Yeah. And so my concern is that that's the message he's operating under. Is mm -hmm. that he, doesn't, he doesn't have any value. And it would be really important for him to talk to somebody, probably not you, because it would be no, hard for no, him, no, no. about that so that he can start to get some traction on changing that lie. I I agree. I agree that you know he doesn't look at he he just kind of goes what what my fa what my family is and what my um, childhood was is what it was. I mm -hmm. I moved on, but, but yeah, that's that's but, good. That's good denial. <laughs> 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 uh, but but the truth is, I, I think I've got some programs um, on the Dove or on my website about trauma that I talk about my own trauma and how it affected yeah. me. Might be good for him to maybe take a look at that. Maybe that'll. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. It's on your uh, Patrick Doyle website. Yes, VeritasCounseling.com. Uh, okay, because, thank you. You know, I, I, I listen to you, and there's a very much of a parallel with my husband. Yep. And um, unfortunately, we've been struggling with our marriage because of it. Yeah, it, it happens. That's, that's the result, is that if you believe you're worthless, you have a really hard time having intimate relationships. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So right. what should I do? Um, tell him to go look at. Um... Well, I would first. What I would first do is I would. I, I, if I were you, I would go watch it, and uh -huh. since you know his story, make sure that it makes sense, and yeah. then it just encourage him and say, you know, I, I I want you to find some relief from this, honey, and I think this guy's story is similar. I'd like you to check it out. If he doesn't, don't badger him. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I wouldn't badger him <laughs> okay. under those circumstances. Yeah, and, and then pray for conviction. Right. Okay. VeritasCounseling.com. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, a lot of those are posted there, by the way, Veritas yeah. Counseling, or some of them are still on the Dove yeah. uh, website at the Dove.us. Yeah. All right, bring us in for landing, Patrick. Um, the bottom line of, of getting the proper values so that you can function as a human being mm -hmm. really comes in a relationship with God. Yeah, and so, you know, First of all, it's not something you're going to get through intellectual knowledge, I don't think. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who are very knowledgeable about the Bible or whatever, and that doesn't necessarily translate into knowing that you're loved. 
One of the things I say to people all the time is that you have to ask God to reveal himself to you. And here's the thing. He doesn't do it instantly all the time. Sometimes it might be a week, a month, a year, little things. But what I want you to do is when you ask, start paying attention to things instead of putting them off. Uh, and I, I can tell you, I've heard testimony after testimony from people about how he's done it. He does it usually in very subtle ways that, that you will know that you know that you know that you know that it's him. It's not, it's not something that's usually very confusing. Mm -hmm. It's very clear he's, he's speaking to you. And for me, it was he spoke to me, and it wasn't an audible voice. It wasn't, you know, skywriting. But I knew it's, I, I like how Eugene Peterson talks about it in Hebrews. He says that no longer I'm going to write it on stone tablets. I'm now going to write it or etch it into the lining of their hearts. And that's what I'm talking about. When, when, it's been, when the truth of God loving you has been etched into your soul, that's when things start to change. Because you know that you know. And that doesn't matter what the circumstances are. doesn't matter what happens. You know that. Do we have the patience for that in today's world? Uh, yes and no. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think that patience comes naturally to anyone. Yeah. But I, I'm just telling you, and, and I see God do this all the time. He'll give you enough difficulty to sit you down. <laughs> because he knows that without help, you're not going to stop and listen. That's, that's really not how we wrote. That's not what we do. We're, we're busy. We want to avoid. We want to distract. That's what we do. So he will, he will reveal. He will interject. He will um, allow you to see something that you're not, you're not going to have the power to see without his help. And see, this is the other part of it. It's something he does. It's not something you do. Which, again, reveals what? How much he cares. That why would the God of the universe take the time to reveal himself to you? To save you, to speak to you, to help you, to be involved with you, to understand, to know. It's pretty remarkable when you really start to think about it. The fact that God cares about me is what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the energy to do all the stuff I do. And the, all the stuff I do... I, I do, I hope, in response to his love, not for my satisfaction, which is very much freeing because then I don't have to be so worried about the outcome. He's in charge of that. I get to just be like a two-year-old with a full diaper and my, know my dad's going to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> he'll change me at the appropriate time and he'll grab my hand and keep me out of the light socket and he's going to take care of me and that's my, that's, that's my confidence and I've seen it over and over and over again, how he shows up and takes care of things. I didn't even know were happening. Now, you've seen in your counseling where people will transition their yes. value from yes. relationships, things to God. Yes, it's remarkable to yeah. watch. And I can tell you that it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the power to do that to someone. I might be the vehicle, but listen, that kind of revelation is from God. It's not from me. It's, and it's not psychological. It's not... It's not um, some hocus pocus stuff. It's it's spiritual. It's God really revealing Himself. And when that occurs, the person's circumstances may not necessarily change. But, right. But they now have a perspective on right. it that's different. And as a result of them f feeling that sort of spiritual level love, their circumstances do change internally. Internally. But it may not change externally. Yeah. Um, and in fact, you know. Uh, I've seen a lot of times where that, that struggle has stayed the same and what it ends up doing is deepening the trust, not, not taking it away. Okay, powerful stuff. And again, uh, you want more of it, you can go to VeritasCounseling.com. Uh, Patrick has a lot there on his website. You can go to the Dove.us. We have a lot of the previous shows and today's show will be posted there as well. But um, take time to... Yeah, take time. Take time. Ask. Wait, be Wait. patient. Yep, and keep asking. Keep asking. All right. Keep knocking. Yep. Keep seeking. Yep. Keep asking. Don't give up. All right, thanks, buddy. You All bet. right, VeritasCounseling.com or uh, check it out at thedove.us. We'll see you next time on Focus Today. Hi, I'm Jim, and I work at the Dove TV. Every weekday between 6 and 8 a.m., our award winning news and sports team bring you the best morning show around. It's live, it's honest, and it's a whole lot of fun. And you help make it happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation 
at our website, thedub.us.